Hey, what's up? It's tea time with Lauren time. Hooray. I'm so excited. I've been like counting down the minutes until I could hit go live because this week's topic is awesome and there were some awesome questions. The topic is weight and style, like your actual weight of your body and style because this is one of the biggest hangups that people have when it comes to transforming their style. It's always like, you know, my body's to this, my body's to that. When I lose the weight, then, then I'll work on my style. It's like a whole situation that is annoying and everyone deals with it. Let me just close this one second. Uh, everyone deals with it no matter how much they weigh or what their body looks like. We all deal with body issues. So as people are beginning to come on live, I wanted to say one thing. Got my teacup because it's tea time. So as many of you know, Field to Cup is like my favorite place to get tea ever in the whole entire universe. I was introduced to the company through uh, one of my contractors who works for me and he sent me a subscription for Christmas and I fell in love with the tea and since then I've been so spoiled and the other tea I drink tastes like pond water. I love them. I've supported the brand. I have a discount code. Um, I just love them. Like I didn't get paid to talk about them. I genuinely love the company and the tea. And I got a really sad email from them yesterday that they're going out of business. And I was so heartbroken. Like I was so heartbroken because first of all, selfishly, because I love the tea and now I'm spoiled and I can't drink anything else and they're not going to be around anymore. But also just as an entrepreneur, I felt very sad because running a business is not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. And I think a lot of times we take the companies um, that serve us for granted. And I just wanted to bring it up just so you can think about those small businesses and all of the little um things that you get to enjoy <laughs> online that people have spent a lot of blood, sweat, and tears on. I know it's hard to correlate the two, but you know, as an entrepreneur to see a, another business go out of business, you can't help but to think about your own uh, mortality when it comes to business. Like, you know, I know for me in the you know, moving forward, I've already started like internally scaling back, but I just can't put into my YouTube channel what I used to put into my YouTube channel. Um, all the free videos that everyone gets to enjoy and watch, you know, at one point I had five videos a week, then it was three, then it was two, and now I'm scaling back to one and I'll throw up these lives on there. You know, they're not perfectly produced, but um, it's expensive. You know, so you spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, you know, to put up this free content for everyone to enjoy. And then people get pissed when you try to sell them a book or a program. They're like, oh, you're just trying to get me to buy your book. Bitch, do you want free YouTube videos? <laughs> you know, it's like not only, you know, as a company, and I'm just speaking about myself now, but with other entrepreneurs too, like, you know, we spoil you with good things and free things to help. And that's just the tip of the iceberg as far as the services that we can provide to you. You pay money to invest in your results and also to invest and support uh, the business owner. So, you know, it just made me sad to see that that company was going out of business because, you know, I'm sure people enjoy their Instagram posts and their Instagram stories about tea, but nobody really puts, you know, their money where their mouth is. And then once, it's gone, it's really sad. So I just wanted to bring that up because the whole tea time with Lauren thing was kind of birthed from my love for that tea. And I really liked doing the segment because it would help remind people of their company. Again, I got nothing in return. I just really like them. 
and then I got to share great content with you. So I thought it was appropriate to share um, that they are going out of business, and if you do like their tea, they are going to keep selling um, until the 14th. You can't do the subscription, but you can buy like bulk of their tea. Um, and they lowered some of their prices down for wholesale just to get their inventory out. So I ordered a bunch because literally, like I got this like this basic bitch tea bag. I'm like, I can't drink this shit. <laughs> now my favorite tea company is going away. <laughs> okay, now back to business. Now that enough people have, have hopped on, um, let's do this thing. So topic is weight and personal style. Body image is a huge issue when it comes to shopping and getting dressed. So I wanted to tackle the top five questions that were submitted out of the many, many that were submitted. Okay, first question is, what is the most common mental block for dressing for the body that you have? Ooh! <laughs> so um, in Personal Style University, for people who are members of that program, you know that one of the first exercises that we do is getting rid of your style roadblocks. That's what I call them, mental blocks, style blocks, style roadblocks. Because if you can't move past them, you can't successfully develop your personal style. That's why people keep shopping and spending money to fix it when they don't know the underlying problem. They don't know what they're fixing. They just keep piling more shit on top of it, more shoes, more bags, more trips to Nordstrom, whatever but they haven't got to the underlying issue. So that's why we do these style roadblocks to figure out like, is this an undeserving thing? Is this a body thing? Is this a money thing? And they go deeper and deeper the more you really dive into the program. And I'm cooking up something new that you guys are gonna find out about in July, but man, we're gonna go on a mental trip all oh. I'm saying too much, I'm saying too much, I'm saying too much. So the biggest block for dressing for the body that you have, it, it basically boils down to not being satisfied with who you are. It's, it's about never being good enough. It's about never being good enough. So, so many of my clients, they say, you know, I'll, I'll work on my style, like you don't understand, I don't wanna buy new clothes because I'm gonna lose the weight. This body, not good, not good. Once I lose the weight, then I'll work on my style. And I always say, great, so what's your plan? What's your plan for, for losing weight? Oh, I don't know, I just like, I need to lose weight. How much? When? Do you have a, uh, a trainer? Do you have a, a dietitian? What's the plan? Well, I don't really have one. I just know that I'm not gonna waste a bunch of money to shop for this body because this body's gonna change. Bitch, how? How's it gonna change? You are staying stuck in a victim mentality of like, I'm not good enough and I don't deserve anything. I don't deserve to take care of my body and I don't deserve to treat the body that I have now with respect by dressing it, loving it, and once you love it, then it's a ripple effect where you're going to love to go to the gym. You're gonna love to eat right. You're gonna love to go on walks with your kids and incorporate fitness into the family. It's all a lack of acceptance and it's a lack of self-love. So that's why my second annual Love Your Body Style Challenge is coming soon. Anyone participate in that last year? It was great. So in July, the Love Your Body Style Challenge is coming back so you can get into that state of self-love and acceptance for who you are right now. There is no mark on the scale that you can hit that says, now you're worthy of love. You're worthy of love right now, whether you have a big belly, a big butt, your arms are too skinny, your legs are too skinny, like whatever, it doesn't matter. There's no marker. You can always love yourself right now. You just have to go through those steps to get that done. So when the Love Your Body Style Challenge comes back, I definitely encourage you guys to join because last year during the challenge, many people, many people reported unexpected weight loss because we did all of these exercises to love and accept who we are right now. 
And once that love came in and the self-hatred went away, then people stopped self-sabotaging themselves. So it's the same reason why when you really put your mind to it, you can do certain things. You can get whatever body it is you want. You can get whatever shoes you want. Like if you really put your mind to it, you can get there. But if it didn't come from the right place, it's really easy to revert back to where you were before and then beat yourself up more. It's a vicious cycle. So it's really, that's the mental block. It's feeling worthy of love. It's feeling worthy of accepting who you are, where you are, and really getting clear on knowing that your body is just this like little vehicle that gets to take you around for life. It's not your identity. You're so much more than that. But people don't really get that, especially with Instagram and all the visuals of the fashion industry that are saying, you have to be like this to be pretty or sexy or cool so much. Uh, so I definitely encourage when I open up that challenge, which is completely free, I encourage you to join and I encourage your female friends to join because it's so important. It's just so important. It's so important to actually like yourself because you have to hang out with yourself all the time. So you need to like your mind, your body, your spirit. You got to get on board with all of it. Okay. Next question. Someone on Facebook is like very angry about, <laughs> about loving your body. Then don't watch. Okay. Question two, what are your tips for concealing belly fat? So this I had to like there were literally 20 questions that asked the same thing. So I picked the question that just made the most sense. Grammatically, they're all the same. What they call them, tummy, a fat stomach. Oh my gosh, this is huge. So I really focus in a lot on dressing for your body type because I know how powerful it can be for your self-esteem. It's not the end all be all, but it's very important. So when I work with clients, I ask them, what's a part of your body that you love? What's a part of your body that you don't love? People have a hard time coming up with what they love, easy time coming up with what they don't love. And it's always their stomach. <laughs> they always think their body type is a apple, or as I call it, a bigger in the middle. They just think that their stomach is this huge protruding focal point. And for some women, it is, but it's a very small percentage of women who actually have that body type where their stomach is the largest part of their body. And you, you know, you can see them, they'll turn around and like their stomach's going out past their boobs. That's someone who genuinely, you know, I wouldn't say needs to, but in the body type principles of the goal of us looking like an hourglass, which traces back to caveman era, big boobs, smaller waist, bigger butt. It says fertile, feed the baby, push out babies with big old hips. So when we're trying to achieve that, if a woman genuinely has a stomach that is bigger than the breasts and the bottom half, then yeah, we can definitely go through some different techniques to help minimize the appearance of your waist and accentuate the other parts. But it's a very small percentage. The rest of us, we get caught up on a pooch or a post baby belly, little things, and you're just hyper fixated on it. So I'd say the first step is, again, goes back to question number one, is releasing yourself from that mental prison. Nobody's looking at your stomach. <laughs> Only you are, and everyone else is looking at your face or your great shoes or enjoying your company. They're not all just staring at that area 24 seven. So you need to get that through your thick skull first. The other part, and I picked conceal, but most people were saying things like hide. We don't need to hide ourselves. We really don't. If you have a stomach, that's okay. Maybe it's because you just brought life into this world. You had a baby. Yeah, cut yourself some slack. It's all right to have a little stomach. Maybe you're really good in the kitchen and you love to cook and you love to eat and you got the belly to show for it. Be proud of that, okay? It's cool. I don't have a six pack, 
because I like cookies. When I do have a six pack, I have to deprive myself. It sucks. So I'd rather have like a little, little squish. So acceptance and don't think about hiding. Think about finding another place to focus. So when we're trying to create a waste for ourselves and we think our waste is too big, well, we can change where that waste is. If I belt something higher on my body, it's going to give the illusion of a waist that's higher and smaller. If we don't want people to look at our protruding bellies, why don't we wear some color, you know, closer to our face, some great jewelry? Why don't we get our hat game on point? Why don't we try some weird lipstick? It's all distraction, right? So if something crazy is going on in the other room, dogs are barking, people knocking at the door, I would want to do things to distract you to pay attention to me over here. So I do something crazy or louder or more fun, more attention grabbing. Something else is grabbing attention. Make a distraction that's more enticing, more exciting. That's how you conceal. And you can do that with any part of your body. Conscious about your stomach, draw attention to your face. Worried about your butt, why don't you show your boobs instead? So it's just a game of don't look at this, look at this. And getting rid of the shame around that part of your body and realizing you're the only one who's hyper, hyper focused on it. Stop thinking about yourself. That's really what it boils down to. Stop being so self-centered. And it's hard. I can be really self-centered sometimes. And I catch myself. I'm like, gosh, I suck. Jeez. Are there other things and other people to think about besides myself and my stomach? Think about that. Okay. Third question. Are stripes only reserved for slim bodies? No. <laughs> no. So this drives me crazy. And this actually another, again, it's a secret project. I'm working on a bunch of secret shit right now. I can't wait till I get to tell all of you about these multiple secret projects I have going. But something that I'm working on, it's really working to demystify all of those fashion myths that me as someone who's been styling women for over a decade and who studies this stuff and lives it and just knows it, I forget that other people are still following those old rules and don't understand that you don't have to be a prisoner to what people made up a hundred years ago or what one person said, or if you do it this way, it looks like that. So everything must No, you can definitely wear stripes. And I think horizontal stripes can actually be quite slimming. It's just a matter of how you style them. For me, a stripe and you want to get the width of the stripe to kind of match with the stature of your body. So if you are medium size, use a medium size stripe. If you're tiny, you can do a smaller stripe. If you're bigger, do a bigger stripe. So it gives a distraction of something to look at. Again, this could work to conceal a tummy. We're focused on a pattern and a print and not just looking at a stomach or whatever area you feel a little uh, self-conscious about. But then adding a layer on top it kind of shrinks down the area of the stripe. So instead of a horizontal stripe, you know, pulling out like this way, looking big, we just have a little column of it because maybe we threw a jacket on over top. So I consider a stripe top, like a little t-shirt, to be a wardrobe staple that can work with multiple style types. Make it a little preppy with a jean jacket, make it a little edgy with leather, make it cute by doing a pink instead of a black. Like there's so many things you can do. So don't avoid them because you don't have a slim body. Okay. Now wear those stripes, wear them with pride. Question four, what if current trends don't suit my body type? Uh, but I still want to look modern and not outdated. Okay. Trends. I just did a video about trends on my YouTube channel, so feel free to check it out. When it comes to trends, there's so many options that there's plenty to say no to and there's plenty to say yes to. And again, 
back to my secrets, but something that I'm cooking up that will be revealed in July, I'm going to be working on more practical trend guides because I'm not a trend person, but I understand that people enjoy trends and they're fascinated by them and they'd like to try them. So I'm going to start approaching trends in a more practical sense of this is what's happening. This is how you can wear it to suit your body, to suit your style type, because you can take a trend and rearrange it to make it work for you. Maybe I'm trying to think, you know, off the top of a trend that might not work for a body type. Okay. Sorry. Let's say, okay, here we go. This is perfect. Remember when skinny jeans first came out? They first came out and everyone was like, whoa, okay, this body ain't gonna work in skinny jeans. I'm still caught up on my boot cut jeans. There was a period of transition and there was a period where boot cut jeans just look whack as hell. Like you looked so outdated, you could not. And all the stores were only carrying skinny jeans, so you had to embrace skinny jeans. But dang it, your butt's big, your thighs are big, this is just not working for you. So you have a choice. You could say, screw it, I'm gonna wear my bootcut jeans and look a little outdated and add more modern things in other areas, make it a part of my signature style, and make it always look fresh. Not always the easiest thing to do. Or, <laughs> has to be drunk from a glass. Oh, girl, no. I have been, mm -mm. nope. I need these bubbles straight to the dome. Someone on Instagram is saying that I should not be drinking this out of the bottle. I have a whole row of bottles in my office and like a refrigerator full. I slam it straight to the head. Mm -mm -mm. So you can figure out different ways to wear those skinny jeans so it does flatter your figure. You know, maybe it's adding a tall boot so it doesn't look so severe. Maybe it's picking the right wash of denim. Maybe the black denim makes you feel a little more slim. Maybe it's finding a slightly longer top. So you can figure out how to adapt a trend to work better for your body. So I would say, you know, in the example I just laid out, the skinny jeans weren't necessarily a trend, but a movement. You know, now they've become a staple. Skinny jeans aren't as in vogue as they were before. You know, now like mom jeans are in and like boyfriend jeans came in, straight leg are really making a comeback, but you're always gonna find skinny jeans. So that was like more of a movement than a trend moment where you had to figure out how to make this work. <laughs> or else just reject it entirely. Said I'm wearing skinny jeans with heels now. Yeah. And that's the thing too. I went hard on trying new trends with jeans, with the straight, with the mom, very comfortable. I found the way to make them look flattering. But as I did my last seven day selfie challenge going through my style solution book, I realized like when I wear skinny jeans, they flatter my figure a lot and they matched up with my style goals of leaning more into my femininity and you know getting myself out there more romantically they just work better for me so thank god they're kind of a staple and not necessarily a trend but when it comes to trend trends like crazy trends you can take them or leave them you can still flatter your figure and insert accessory trends so you can feel modern but still stay true to your body and another thing that I'm cooking up in my secret project is more focus on addressing different trends by body type so you can make different choices. If belted blazers are hot, which they are, they're all over the runway, how could you figure out how to wear it if you're bigger on the bottom, bigger on the top, if you have a big stomach? It's about changing the placement of the belt, the width, the this, the that, the color. There's always a way to do something. You just have to educate yourself. And that's why I'm here, to help you. Okay, and the final question, is the shape of your body important when deciding what to wear? Okay, yes and no. <laughs> so I don't think dressing for your body type is the end all be all of looking good. I definitely 
push it a lot. I have a program called Dress Right for Your Body Type. I have videos on YouTube. I've got a free ebook. I talk about body type stuff all the time because it's so powerful in terms of improving your self-esteem because we have a distorted sense of what our bodies look like and what they should look like. We're, we're totally opposite ends of the spectrum. So when we can help use clothing to shape the ideal, whatever the ideal is to us or to the world, we therefore can feel more confident. If I'm walking around in the skinny jeans and the heels and a top that, you know, follows the curves of my body because I have more of an hourglass silhouette, I can look in the mirror and know I look slimmer <laughs> than I do in my baggy boyfriend blazer that's not for my body type. So if I need that confidence boost, or if I'm gonna be on television, if I'm going on a date, I can have that to help me feel good and help me put, put myself in the state of mind that I need to be in for that situation. No one wants to go on TV or have their photo taken and they look like a house because they didn't know how to dress their body type, where if you did, you look really good, you have the good photo, you're feeling confident, everybody wins. But you don't have to do that every day. I don't feel like dressing like that today. Today I have on a baggy blazer, I've got some you know, straight leg jeans and a little black wife beater from Target. You know, I'm working from home, it's no big deal. I really don't need to feel hot and sexy right now. I need to get a lot of shit done today. I'm gonna be working late. So you can take it or you can leave it, but I think it's important to understand it. It's important to be able to pull out that, that ace in the hole. You know, my one of my clients, she had this red carpet thing to go to. I talked about it in the live a couple last week or something. Time, I can't get a grasp on it. But she didn't have a dress. She needed one last minute. She couldn't order it online. It was too late. The dress that she wore last year, she's like, maybe I'll wear it again. It didn't fit. She borrowed a dress from a friend. I should post these pictures because it's pretty dramatic, the difference. I'm going to ask her if I can post it. She doesn't care. I'm going to post it. Just talking to myself. So she borrowed this dress from a friend, and she put it on, and I was like, you look like a grandma in that dress. I said, it's a cute dress, but you look like a grandma. It's not flattering your figure. You're walking a red carpet. She was going to the Critics' Choice Awards, and she was nominated for an award like she didn't tell me that she just said I had an event I said oh you are not going out like that looking like a shapeless grandma you've got to dress for your body type so I said okay keep the dress push up the sleeves I need you to get a wide belt I need you to get a leather wide belt I sent a link I said get this one on Amazon prime it you need to put on this type of shoe and we took that grandma dress and made it work for her body type because I know, she knows, you're gonna be photographed. You've got to accentuate your waist. You cannot have any mystery there. You don't know what angle they're gonna catch you at. You don't, you don't wanna be on that worst dress list. You don't want your red carpet moment when you are not You won't be looking like a big old granny. So knowing those principles were key in that moment. What she's wearing at home, she can wear that grandma dress without a belt, go on, have a good time. But when it matters most, you need to know how to do it and it does become very important. And not just because she looked good that day, she felt amazing, she felt so good. If you're taken out of the moment or if your moment is overshadowed when the images come up on Getty Images and you're like, oh my God, why did, why did I wear that? Why did I wait till the last minute? What was I thinking? You don't want to post them on Instagram or Facebook to celebrate your moment, not your fashion moment, your moment in life because you feel ashamed of yourself. And then it goes back to that vicious cycle of I'm not good enough, my body's not good enough, that mental block that we touched on in question number one. That's why I care about this stuff so much. That's why I care about this style stuff so much it has such a ripple effect 
and it can really affect how you perceive yourself. And that's the most important because if you're not perceiving yourself accurately as the awesome badass that you are, everyone else can feel your self-doubt and they can feel your insecurity and the world is going to react to that. And that's not really the real you. The real you is awesome. So we have to line up everything in place so we can always show up as awesome as we can be in a given moment. So that's that, friends. That's Tea Time with Lauren. Boom. We got that in 30 minutes exactly. Okay, I'm going to take a little break because I'm going live in Personal Style University next. If you are a member of Personal Style University, you know that every week I come in and do a live Q&A where I stay on as long as needed to answer every single one of your fashion questions. I get people email me all the time, just people that watch the YouTube channel or follow me on social with these novel of an email. Lauren, I need you to help me. I need you to answer this question, this question, this question, which I wear here, which I do. Girl, you're not a client, okay? If you want to be a client, then join PSU and you can ask me anything you want, anytime you want, and I'll answer it. So that is reserved for my members. So I'm going to take a little break and just ghettoly drink Pellegrino right out the bottle and then go live. So I'll see you guys next week. I'll announce the topic um, either Wednesday or Thursday next week, and I'll see you guys live. Peace.